It is time now for Doc Talk. Every week we ask you for your medical questions and we take them right to local doctors. This week it's all about kids and we are joined by Dr. Dina Tom, pediatrician with University Health. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me again. Great to see you. All right, first question. My grandchild has been battling a horrible case of fungus on their toenails for three years. We've tried everything our provider and dermatologist recommended, but nothing appears to be effective. That question from Ace. So Ace, this is not uncommon, unfortunately, for toenail fungus to be difficult to treat. So in children, it's actually not very common to have toenail fungus. However, I learned something new recently that if a parent has toenail fungus, their child is much higher risk to have it. Really? For two reasons, actually. One is likely genetic, that it does run in families. The second reason is that basically the exposure to the fungus. So sharing clipper, nail clippers and sharing shoes and socks and all of those things. So uh, it is unfortunate because it, they, it is difficult to treat. So we start with topical lotions and creams, then we go all the way to doing medication by mouth, but some of those medicines can be hard on the liver. So if they do start on those medicines, they can treat it, but usually they have to be on it for almost a year and you have to get blood levels checked. So it can be it can be a tough, sticky situation. Is it harmful? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Not particularly. It can cause breakage of the nails. It can introduce other infections and it can be a, a little painful if your nail is breaking, but for most people, it's it's just unseemly to look at. They don't yeah. want to wear flip flops and sandals. Yeah. It's not very pretty. So I understand that that's a you know that's a hard thing to watch yeah. your grandkid have. Yeah. Well, it's frustrating when you can't get something fixed. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, our next question also from a grandparent. This person asks, my grandson consistently has sweaty palms and bottoms of his feet. What causes this? Should we be concerned? This is a phenomenon called hyperhidrosis, and we don't realize that children do have it. When we're adults, we notice it because when we get nervous or in you know, a social situation, we might sweat a lot under our arms or when we shake people's hands, oh, and yeah, especially in college, right? <laughs> you're like dating someone and you're like, oh, thanks for that. <laughs> um, but it's really not dangerous. Um, in children, we notice it maybe that they're a little bit, we call them hot blooded or they might have sweaty hands and feet. It's not a problem. It's really not something that you should rush to get treated because the treatments for it, you can do some medicines and, and some like laser treatments and things, but it's really more of a, you know, a social, an, again, another social thing. So the biggest part is in the feet because it can keep your socks wet and you don't want to put your kids' shoes, uh, feet in shoes that are not going to breathe. So um, my daughter actually had some of that when she was a little baby. She would come home and her feet would be wrinkly because they were so wet and we had to get her special sh shoes. But thankfully she's gotten over that. Well, and she grew out of it. I she mean, that's the question. Is there a chance that they will grow out it of is, it? There is a chance they'll grow out of it. And there's also a chance that it may be something that they can work through, especially if it's something that has to do with like social situations or anxiety. When they're yeah. teenagers, they can wear deodorant but it's a little bit harder if it's their hands and feet. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. But it is normal. All right, next question for Dr. Tom. Should children get an updated COVID-19 shot? This is from Aguilar. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes, absolutely. So the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention just came out with their statement recently. Yesterday they made, uh, they posted on their website, if uh, your child is over the age of six months old, it is recommended to get this year's COVID-19 booster. So we're thinking about it now like a booster shot, just like the flu shot yearly. It, the companies change it as they make it for the new strains. And while for some people, they might have the common cold with COVID, there are other people who are still really at serious risk for getting asthma attacks, pneumonia, and then long COVID, which you okay. hear about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yes, it's very safe. And um, especially based on the risk factors of your children or your, you know, the elderly folks around you definitely want to go get that done. I'm glad that, that this question was asked because yeah. we're not paying as much attention yeah. to COVID no. as we did certainly just a few years ago. So I'm glad yeah. that question was asked. Well, and you know what? I have known in the last two weeks probably 
10 people that I work with that are friends with mine, especially traveling on airplanes who are coming back with COVID. Mm -hmm. And it, it is more like a cold, but they've had fevers, cough. It's just really unpleasant. They can't go to work, those kinds of things. So COVID actually has had a huge spike recently. Yeah. A very large spike, even as high as it was in the very beginning. It's not as universally dangerous, but it's still really something that you want to try and avoid not having. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Our next question, it is National Suicide Awareness Month. What can we as parents, teachers, friends do to protect our children from suicide? So this is a topic that we don't love to talk about. Yeah, um, but we need to. We need to talk about it. And it's actually even labeled a silent epidemic because nobody wants to talk about it. Even when it happens to someone you know or someone close to your family or friends, we don't want to bring it up. And it's, it's difficult to talk about, but it's really important because it is the second leading cause of death in children 10 to 14 years old. And that's a lot younger, I think, than most people realize. We, we think that it's in older teenagers or college students or, or um, you know, it's really common in, in veterans have a higher risk for it. But it's really that age group of middle schoolers and early high schoolers who don't really understand what it means when they feel an impulse to do something that's potentially reckless that could harm themselves. So it's very, very important that if you are concerned that your child has changes in their behavior, has depression, has, um, is, is withdrawing from you, is withdrawing and talking about being bullied or making comments like I shouldn't be alive or it would be better if I wasn't here, it is so important to talk to your child and encourage them to talk to you about their feelings. Asking them about their feelings and whether or not they feel like they want to hurt themselves or not being alive will not increase their chances of hurting themselves. Right. It won't. In, in fact, it will open a door that, that they may not have available to them. And so it's so important to be aware that this is, this is important. And talk to them about their feelings and if they hear from their friends yes. that yes. may be thinking about it or, you know, just to start a conversation as hard as it can be. Absolutely. To, to, for lack of a better word, break the ice, yes. start the conversation. I, I know how teenagers can be. They're going to roll their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Dad, why are we talking <laughs> about this? Yeah. But it, but in the end, they do listen. They do take they in do. what you're saying. They do. Your They hear your voice. They're not going to tell you that they hear it, but yeah. they do hear your voice. And I think it's a great point that they can be an upstander. We call it an upstander by, by realizing that it's okay to come to me. I won't. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. If you come to me about a friend, if you come to me about someone you're worried about, that's you could save them. Yeah. And and that's meaningful to a child. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Dina Tom, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Great to see you it's again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, mm -hmm. always a pleasure to be with you. All right, Doc Talk every Thursday at 6.30. You have a question, we'll try and get an answer. Scan the QR code to submit your questions right now.